Hello, thank you for participating in the Bryant and Stratton College Professional Development Series, Modules 1 and 2, featuring Addie and Gagne. Module 1. Instructional design is the process by which instruction is improved through the analysis of learning needs and systematic development of learning experiences. Instructional designers often use technology and multimedia tools to enhance instruction. Analyze, design, develop, implement, and evaluate. This model was brought to life in the 1950s and can be credited for educationaltechnology.net, originally developed for the U.S. Army by the Center for Education Technology at Florida State University. In Addy, analyze is where the instructional designer clarifies the problem or issue that needs to be addressed with an instructional intervention, if you will. Defining the training and conducting an extensive audience analysis to determine the instructional environment, any pre-existing knowledge, skills, abilities, opportunities, and any constraints that may be present. So on the first day of class, when we do a pre-analytic, to understand how much a student knows about a subject, that's when we do this. That's when we analyze. In the design phase, the instructional designer writes learning objectives and determines the instructional strategies that can be utilized to achieve those objectives. So decisions are made about how the instructional materials will feel, look, operate, and be delivered to the learner. A good example of this would be when we do our PowerPoints or pre-recorded lectures. Now, the third phase of the Addy model is to develop. So, we're taking the content, it's now assembled and incorporated into the design to produce the instructional or performance support materials. Now, this is deliverable um, and it's definitely reviewed for quality and then revised again. So in this case, once we've made our uh, pieces that we're going to use, such as our PowerPoints, Kahoot, um, things like that, uh, Quizlets, uh, we're gonna send these to our program directors to make sure that they're acceptable. Now, the fourth phase is implementation. So once everything is done, our program director says that the information looks good, we're going to go ahead and finish. So it's rolled out to our intended audience, and then we monitor the impact that it has. Lastly, we're going to evaluate. So this is where the instructional designer uses various methods to determine whether the course or performance support tool, so of course in this case would be our Kahoot, Quizlet, uh, guided study notes, recorded lectures, things like that, um, whether the delivery of them has given the expected result. So did the student retain the information given critical thinking? Was that being able to be applied based on the way that the information that was given to the student is used? Now we're going to look at Robert Gagne's nine events of instruction. They're based on a behaviorist approach to learning, and this is identified by the mental conditions needed for learning in adults. So the first thing we're gonna look here is where we gain the student's attention. So it's kind of an emotional buy-in, right? It's the first step in laying the foundation. So that's gonna be doing our 
uh, icebreakers and things like that, or um, we can tell a story, maybe um, how our life uh, relates to the information that we're putting forward. We can even ask a question, um, something that might be thought provoking. So the second of these nine events is to inform the student of the objectives. So we're gonna go ahead and establish expectations for the course and the criteria. This way the student understands how we're going to measure for success or failure. Of course, remembering that failure is just the first attempt in learning. Now we're going to stimulate the recall of prior learning. So this is going to help us leverage existing knowledge uh, as a scaffold to incorporate new knowledge. So in the course of our blended programs, that's going to be where we are able to take the information that the students read in the lecture series or completed in the modules and then delve a little deeper once we're in the classroom. The fourth phase is to present the content. So we can use chunking as an example. Now, if you've never heard of chunking, um, per fascinatinghistory.org, um, this is an activity that involves breaking down a difficult text into more manageable pieces, uh, having students rewrite these in their own words. Chunking helps students identify keywords and ideas, develop their ability to paraphrase, and makes it easier for them to organize and to synthesize information. One great example of, of a chunking activity would be Cornell Notes. When a student uses Cornell Notes, they're able to really pick out those key points and any questions that they may have. Phase five is to provide the learner guidance. So supplement the content with case studies, activities, discussion questions, uh, any other instructional support material that you could use, uh, Kahoot or Quizlet, uh, things like that will really help uh, with providing the learner uh, with guidance. Now, for phase six, we're going to elicit that performance. So we're gonna challenge the learner's activities to recall and then utilize and evaluate that knowledge. So for us, that's going to be classroom assessments. Um, Kahoot is also another good way um, to, to make sure that we're eliciting that performance and really challenging um, the learner with these recall activities. Um, but classroom assessments, something simple, uh, that's definitely one way to, to do this. So looking at phase number seven, providing feedback. So we're going to use immediate feedback to reinforce knowledge. One great way to do this is directly after a classroom assessment, go ahead and collect all the papers, and then as soon as that is done, you can go ahead and review the answers to the questions uh, that were just asked of the students. Another way would be if you set up a test electronically is making sure that you have the feedback um, for the correct answer and have that activated so that after a student takes uh, an assessment, they're able to see uh, what they got wrong and what the correct answer might be. Moving on to phase eight. So now we're going to assess their performance. So we're gonna test the learner on their knowledge against an established criteria. So what exactly does that mean? So that's gonna be our major assessment, right? That's gonna be test one, test two, their final. Now these are gonna be formal assessments things that we can use to see exactly how this information was retained, the development of those critical thinking skills and the use of them. Now lastly is phase nine. So we're gonna enhance the retention and transfer to job. So what does that mean? So we're gonna use content retention strategies to appropriate job aids to retain new knowledge. So that's gonna be something like having the student become the teacher. So when the student comes up to the front of the class and presents, whether it's five minutes or two minutes, about a specific subject, that's going to help reinforce that in their minds as they lead the class by example. 
Thank you for participating in the Brian and Stratton College Professional Development Series on the instructional design models of Addie and Gagne. If you have any further questions, please reach out to your program director.